Pivot tables are an absolutely fantastic tool that allows you to sort data by multiple different criteria. They're incredibly powerful and easy to use. I'll be showing you how to do it in today's video. Hey everyone and welcome back. This is the Part-Time Economist and you are in the video series where I teach you how to be a spreadsheet superhero. In today's video, we are talking all about LibreOffice Calc and how to use pivot tables. So let's rewind just a little bit and understand why pivot tables are so important in the first place. If you remember from our previous video, I showed you how to simply sort data. Which store in our example had the most sales? Which store had the least sales? But in the real world, you're probably going to want to sort by more categories than just one. You might want to know how many different districts are there? How many different managers are there? What is each manager's total profit across all the different stores they manage if they manage multiple different stores. What was the highest performing store in the Western District, right? There's so much more that you can want to know than just simple sorting. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do that with pivot tables, specifically using LibreOffice, which is free and open source software that you do not have to pay hundreds of dollars to Bill Gates to use his products. So with that being said, let's jump right into it with the basics. How do you even create a pivot table in the first place? Well, as with everything in LibreOffice Calc, there are multiple ways of doing this, but it starts by selecting the data that we want to create a pivot table from. Now, one way you can do this is by going to insert and pivot table. I find it just a little bit easier to go up here and click on this icon that looks like a table with kind of a hinged arrow. So we're going to go ahead and click there. We are going to select OK for the current selection and we hit a road bump because it's asking us to put row fields, data fields, column fields, all kinds of stuff. How do we know what goes where? I think the best way of approaching this is to start with the basics. The row fields, I want you to think of the row field of how we are actually sorting that data. How do we want to view our data? Let's just suppose that we want to view all of the different managers that we have. We will enter that as a row field and click OK. What you'll see is that it will automatically launch for us on a new sheet and we will see all of the different managers that we have. Not a lot of information, but even right here, it's pretty interesting because what this does is it takes all the different managers that we have. Remember, we have Fred managing several different stores. We don't need to have Fred five different times. We just need to have one instance of each manager. So this gives us a condensed list of all the unique managers that we have. But again, still not a lot of data. We actually want to put some numbers to these different managers. So to edit or to add more fields to our pivot table, we're going to come back and we just click anywhere within the pivot table. We will come back up here to the pivot table icon. And all we've got to do is drag and drop more fields into the pivot table. So we have the row fields. And we know that the row fields is how we are sorting our data. The data fields is the data that we actually want to see. So pretty intuitive there. Let's suppose we are concerned with the total profit. And you can see here it gives us the sum profit. So if we have a manager that manages two or three different stores, what we're going to do is we're just going to see out of all the stores they manage, what was this manager's total profit? So let's go ahead and click OK. And what we can see, this automatically calculates the total profit for each manager. So let's go back just to show how powerful this is. As an example, we've got Fred. He's managing a store, well, two stores in the Eastern District, one where he made $90, one where he made $30. Obviously, if we're only making $90 or $30, we've got bigger issues, but for the example, it's simple numbers. So when we go to Fred, we see that it has automatically summed up that value for us to $120. Now, 
we start to see some pretty big problems here if we are a district manager. We see that basically all of our managers are losing money. So we want to figure out, is this a problem with the manager? Is this a problem with our store? Is this a problem with the district? What is going on here? And pivot tables allow us to add more data fields for consideration. So again, we're going to go back into the pivot table, clicking on any cell within the pivot table, and then coming back up to our pivot table icon. And let's just go ahead and add district into the row fields. So now we're going to sort our data, not just by managers, but by districts as well. And one thing I will tell you is that whichever order you put this in is the order it's going to go from left to right. Generally, it makes sense to go from big to small. So we're going to start with the district, then we'll view the manager. So let's go ahead and click OK. We can see that within the Eastern District, we've got Fred, Jared, and Joe. And within the North District, we've got Bella, Josie, and Tom. So what we're starting to see here is that we have a very strong outlier in our data. We can see that virtually every manager in the Southern District lost money, right? So that is very valuable, right? Because by breaking it down this way, we can see so much more information than if we're just looking at a sorted list of profit from biggest to smallest, right? We can clearly see we are having some major issues here with the Southern District. Now, let's suppose that we know a tornado for example, came through the Southern District and completely destroyed a lot of stuff. So we expect the Southern District to have lower sales. Now, we want to kind of pull that data out. We don't want to consider that data because we know there's a valid reason for it having low sales. Or just as another example, we can see that Stacy was losing $150. She was our worst performing manager. And again, let's suppose that Stacy is in training. She's kind of learning things. She's making mistakes. And we understand that this is part of the process. So we don't want to count her data when we're making these decisions and policy because we know she's kind of an outlier. How do we exclude data that we don't want from the pivot table? Quite simply, all we have to do is go to the top of the pivot table and we select whatever we want to remove. So if we want to remove a manager, we will come to the manager column and we will simply unclick Stacy. So watch what happens when we unclick Stacy, you will see the Southern District. Stacy is going to fall off there. So it automatically updates as well as the total results. So that's pretty cool. So far, you've learned how to sort by multiple criteria. You've learned how to remove data. And let's just look one last thing at how to sort the data that we're looking for. So right now, we've got the districts, we've got the managers, and we can see our profit is still in kind of a haphazard order, right? We've got the Eastern District, the highest profitable store is listed first. In the Northern District, we've got the least profitable store listed first. Now, if you're just thinking about this from a basic perspective of what we've talked about in the previous video, your first inclination is probably going to be just to select all of these cells and simply go to data and sort by ascending or descending. However, that's not going to be what you're going to want because you're going to see it just moves everything all over the place. So what we actually want to do here, we want to go back to our pivot table. We want to add in a row field and we're going to move profit into the row field. Now, this is where I say you want to be paying attention to what order you put these in. I'm going to do it first the wrong way and then I'll show you how to do it the right way. So if we just put profit at the bottom, it's going to give us a category for profit and we can sort this by ascending. We can sort this by descending, but what you'll notice is that it is only sorting by the manager. So it's going to show us, for example, Tom. It's going to show us Tom's most profitable store first, but it's not going to move Tom in this northern district. It's not going to move him above Bella, even though he had a higher total profit. So what we actually want to do, we want to go ahead and control Z to get rid of that. We want to come back here and we do want to add profit, but we want to add it in a different order. So let's go to our pivot table. So what we're going to do, we're going to take profit. We are going to put it between district and manager. So what this will do is it will show us the district. Again, those are just in the order we put them in. Then we want to know what was the most profitable manager within each district. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to profit. We will sort 
descending, I guess, if we want to see the highest profit first. And what it's going to do is it's going to show us the most profitable store within each district. So as you can see here, Tom making $23, $20, $7. So we're sorting by the most profitable store within each district. So pretty cool stuff there. Again, there is so much more we can do with pivot tables. We don't just have to see the sum as the data in the end. We can do standard deviations. We can do so much more. We'll get into that in a different video, but in today's video, I just wanted to give you the basics of how to use pivot tables in the free and open source software program, LibreOffice Calc. I hope it helps. I hope you found the video useful and I will see you next time.